Hey everyone, Anthony Four Before Diesel. Bit of an older 2009 LC150 Land Cruiser, LC150 Prado in Australia. Wanted to show you a couple of things about the radiator. Um, for these older ones, it is, well, it's getting, it's 14 years old, so it's getting close and there's a few things you need to do. We're doing the BFE job here and we're putting the new water pump and timing belt and all that. And we've done the clean on the air conditioning condenser. This one's it's a bit dirty you know it's from down the beach there's a bit of probably a little bit more extra rust and corrosion and stuff like that around than uh, what they normally have and maybe that's why I'm, I'm about to show you a bit closer on that radiator we're going to go and have a look at it but I'm just showing you we are replacing the radiator so sometimes with the radiator you might sorry sometimes with the BFE the big front engine job you might want to replace the radio, and I'll show you the reasons why. The radiator, radiator, not radio, radiator. So it's a bit of a filth bag, really, but look, it's clean on the areas where work, we're working on it and going to work on it. See, new water pumps in there already. Time belt soon. We're still on the cleaning process at the moment, and we will give it a clean up when we're done. And you know what? All the full before diesel workshop partners should and will be doing the same. Um, you bring in the vehicle to them clean would be good. Check out the how to wash the engine videos. And when they're done, they should clean it up. Even if you don't clean it, they should clean it up afterwards, if not before as well. Like, you know, inject the jobs. We want everything nice and clean. Anyway, what really happened, I want to show you this filthy radiator. And this is a lot of the stuff that gives us an opportunity to show you a lot of the stuff that gets cleaned out by externally reverse flushing the radiator core the way we do if you watch the bfe videos check out the playlist on our youtube channel 4 before diesel yep go to your subscriptions 4 before diesel click on that take your check out the playlist on our youtube channel there's one called bfe and then you'll know what we're talking about now here's this little bit that gets broken off by people all the time and this is kind of the main reason i think that he wanted to replace the radiator, he's um, provided himself. We do have a couple of spare radiators in stock for when they're required for whether it's with engines or BFE jobs like this. But you can see this one's really badly deteriorated, which is different to some of the others. So if you see your radiator, if it's black and everything like that, and it looks in good condition, then we don't recommend changing them. But this was broken and when I saw it, I went, well, I just wanted to show it to you really and show you how, see it's all discolored from the heat. See here, sometimes they'll look like that. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, this one's a good opportunity to give it a good knock around. I'm not going to do it yet. I'll do it later in the video. I'll get the hammer out and we'll start, we'll, we'll start giving a bit of a bash around because this is rubbish. And I want to show you the sort of condition it's in. So normally what you're looking at is it's in the car and this is the side you're reverse flushing. You're pushing the stuff through that way, the way it came and you'd be looking down the gap to see what you can see and how clean it is and that sort of thing. And you can't always see too much, which is why I wanted to also show you what all the debris and stuff like that, right? That you need to concentrate on pushing out. So let me ask you this question. If your radiator's got 150 or 200 or 300,000 kilometers of bugs, dust, debris, hair, whatever this stuff is in your radiator, do you think this is a contributor to a cracked piston because it's not going to get the same cooling efficiency? You know, all these people I see on Facebook, they write, oh, you know, mine, you know, they get their, my coolant temperatures don't go higher than, look, the 1GD is terrible. It's always 91, 92, but the 1KD and the 120, it's rarely even hits 90 degrees. And if it ever did, it'd be 91, 90. There's no way I'd ever let it see 93, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, because it's not within the recommended normal operating range. And people are talking about in the 90s, the hundreds. I mean, one of them, you know, went to 125 and then it ended up cracking a piston as well. We've got another, been notified about another cracked piston today as well. It's uh, on a remap. I was a bit disappointed when that happens. And I said, you know, not good. But anyway, the remap stayed. There's a whole story behind that, and I'm sure there'll be videos on that as well. So please, if you're listening to me, avoid the remap situation because, but the point is, if the radiator is not getting the designed airflow situation, and you can see with all this stuff here, clearly it can't flow through there. I mean, can you see through that radiator? You can see a little bit up in the top corner there, right? But as we go down, see what I mean? Oh, there's some, uh, that's some white containers in the background there. So even in here in these cores, there is cleaning that needs to be done. 
and it needs quite a bit. That's why I said the VFE price isn't fixed, it varies, because I'm gonna spend some time and really try and get as much as that. We can't always get it all out. You might wanna pull your radiator out and do it, you know what I mean? It'd give a bit more access, but you can do a 90% job with it in there, and that saves you a lot of money, so we don't actually have to pull the radiator out, but it's up to you what you wanna do. But be aware of the reduced airflow situation, not only from the debris, but when you do install an aftermarket accessory like a bull bar, you know, front protection device, whatever you want to call it, at the end of the day, it reduces your airflow. And if you haven't got the cooling that's designed and required for that engine, that four cylinder in that big four wheel drive, what do you think's going to happen? Do you think, you know, something's got to give? So what I'm saying is, to me, it certainly looks like another contributor to when a cracked piston may occur. Anyway, Nice new radiator, how beautiful is that, right? So this is gonna get some people thinking. If we're doing the BFE job and you want a new radiator, we can add a new radiator to the job if you want. I'm not saying you need that, but it all comes down to how the vehicle's been used, the conditions, how it's been treated, the condition of the radiator, whether it's worth, you know, when we see the brittle sort of black plastic like that, I'm gonna recommend, you know what, it's probably a good idea to do it as prevention. Not a bad idea for people that want to spend a bit more money and keep the vehicle and keep it reliable. And of course, if your radiator looks anything like this, we're going to recommend changing it when we replace your engine, um, if that ever occurs. Quick little part I want to add into this video is just show you, because a lot of people look at their radiator and they can't find, they're changing their own radiator and they can't find the mounting bolts. We've left the ratchet on this one to make it really easy. You've got four mounting bolts, two at the top. So that's where they go. Right, you see? configuration same at the other side and mate do you want to point out either side where the bottom one is got to look down here it's in the chassis cross no, rail down point? there yeah you point in there that's it it's in there people see that hole there looking straight down same each side same over the other side so straight down from where this one is in a direct line there's a hole in the chassis see that airbag sensor there just below that straight in same at the other side all right just remember if you do break your radiator here um keep the old clamp that's why i say when you do whatever you do put the old clamp back here so then you can't lose it and if you cut the hose which looks like this one's been cut then it's a bit too short so we're going to recommend a new hose and a new clamp which we don't keep in stock but you know this will do for now but the recommendation is to change it because you know it's not factory anymore let's have a look at this old bit of rubbish and see how brittle it is with the uh you know with the old a little just a little ball pain you know little hammer you know let's because people want to know you know how still pretty strong so because i want you replacing your radiator when you don't need to i mean people tell me that's brittle it's not that brittle it's mainly because it got lent on or got caught on they can break sort of easily if you get caught on them they're not really This is rubbish anyway. You could reuse the core, I don't believe anyone is. So I'm just trying to show that, you know, it's not, it's not like, you know, it's not, you know, it's bloody strong. So if you see it discolored like that and you go, oh, Anthony said in the video, that's why you keep watching until the end because we're going to do stuff like What's going to take to break it, you know? So it's discolored, but it's still Toyota, right? Ball peen in. So don't just replace your radiator because it's discolored. That would be the wrong information. And this thing, of course I could break more of it off, but you know, just don't lean on that and break it. We did break it. We've told you probably a hundred times not to, but demonstrated enough yet how strong this is so I met with a good smash I managed to bust the rest of that off but it does look like there's enough meat there that you could drill it and tap it and glue and all Some people have done stuff like that but actually it's not going to pieces so if you see your radiator discard like that don't replace it I'm not going to recommend it if you've broken that, that's the only time you need to replace it. Now let's test this one as well. You ready? 
You ready? No, I'm just joking, mate. As if, as if I'm gonna start smashing his $600 radiator. But my point is, these are not really brittle. Even when they're discolored, we just demonstrated how strong it is. So uh, beware of thinking you need a new radiator when you don't need one. Once you've broken that, I would suggest you need one, even though you might be able to do a repair, because there is people that have done things like tapped it out and threaded it and put brass in there and that, and it's leaked or broken away. So it doesn't seem like it's strong enough to do that, even though a lot of people are also successful. I think the way to do it is once it gets to that point, you need to replace it, but you can save yourself 600 plus labor by just being really careful and not leaning or touching that. And I'm pretty sure that's a video, enough mucking around, enough shenanigans. Butter Bing, we'll continue with this, get the job done because people need their cars back. And if you don't want to miss the next one, you know, subscribe, turn the bell on. And if there was something you liked or learnt, smash the like button. Catch you on the next video. See ya.